بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ٹوڈے آئی ویل ڈسکس ود یو اے ٹاپک گلوبلائزیشن اینڈ ایٹس ہسٹری فسٹ آئی ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ گلوبلائزیشن اینڈ دین لیٹر آئی ویل ڈسکس ود یو ایٹس ہسٹری سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ ایٹ فرام گلوبلائزیشن گلوبلائزیشن مینس دا اسپیڈ اپ آف موومنٹس اینڈ ایکسچینجز ایکسچینجز آف ہیومن بینگس goods and services, capital, technologies, or cultural practices all over the planet. One of the effects of globalization is that it promotes and increases interactions between different regions and populations around the globe. According to World Health Organization, globalization can be defined as the increased interconnectedness and uh, interdependence of peoples and countries. It is generally understood uh, to include uh, two interrelated elements. One is the opening of international borders to increasingly fast flows of, of goods, services, finance, people and ideas. And the next one is the changes in, in the institutions and policies at national and international levels that facilitate or promote such flows. Now, let's talk about the history or a brief history of globalization. You should know that when Chinese uh, e-commerce giant Alibaba in 2018 Uh, they announced it had chosen the ancient city of Xi'an as the site for its new regional headquarters. The symbolic value was not lost on the company. It had brought globalization to its uh, ancient birthplace. The start of the old Silk Road, it named its new offices uh, the Aptly, which is the Silk Road headquarters. The city where globalization has started more than 200 years ago would also give a stake in globalization's future. Alibaba shouldn't be alone in looking back as we are entering a new digital driven era of globalization. We call it globalization 4.0. It is worthwhile that we do the same. When did globalization start? and uh, what were its major phases and where it is headed tomorrow these are the questions that we are looking for this piece also caps our our series on globalization the series was driven ahead of the uh, 2019 annual meeting of the world economic forum in davos which uh, focuses on on globalization 4.0 and previous pieces We looked at uh, some winners and losers of economic globalization, the environmental aspect of globalization, cultural globalization, and uh, digital globalization. Now we look back at its history. So when did international trade start? And uh, how did it lead to globalization? People have been trading goods for almost as long as they have been around. But uh, as one of the first century BC, a remarkable phenomena occurred. For the first time in history, uh, luxury products from China started to appear on the other edge of the, of the uh, Euro-Asian continent. In Rome, They, have, they got there after being uh, hauled for thousands of miles along the Silk Road. Trade had uh, stopped being a local or regional affair and started to become global. So this is not uh, to say globalization had, has started in, uh, in the, uh, earnest. Silk was mostly a luxury good and so uh, were the pieces that were added to the, inter- the intercontinental trade between Asia and Europe. As a percentage of the total economy, the value of these uh, exports wa- was tiny, 
and uh, many middlemen were involved to get the goods to their destination. But uh, the global trade links were established and for those involved it was a gold mine from, from purchase price to final sale price. The multiple went in the dozens. The Silk Road could uh, prosper in part because two great empires dominated uh, much of the route. If trade was interrupted, it was most often because of uh, blockades by the local enemies of Rome or China. If the Silk Road eventually closed, as it did uh, after, after several centuries, the fall of the empires had everything to do with it. And when it reopened in Marco Polo's late uh, uh, medieval time, it was because the rise of a new uh, hegemonic empire. The, the Mongols, it is a pattern we, we will see throughout the history of trade. It uh, thrives when nations protect it. It falls when they when they don't. The next is the is the trade happened thanks to Islamic merchants. As the new religion spread in all direction from its Arabian heartland in the seventh century, so did the trade too in this in this century. The founder of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was famously a merchant was uh, also uh, his wife khadija trade was thus in the dna of the of the new religion and its followers and that showed by the uh, early 9th century muslim traders already dominated the uh, uh, mediterranean and the asian and the indian ocean trade Afterwards, they could be found, found as far as the East is in Indonesia, which over time became a Muslim majority country. And as far uh, West is the Moorish Spain. The main focus of Islamic trade in those Middle Ages were, were spices. Unlike silk, uh, spices were traded mainly by, by sea. Since ancient times, but by the medieval era they, they had become the true focus of international trade. Chief among them were, were, the, were the claws, nut, nutmeg and the mess from the uh, fabled spice Icelands, the Maluku Icelands in Indonesia. They were extremely expensive and in high demand also in Europe. But as with silk, they remained a luxury product and trade remained relatively low volume. Globalization still uh, didn't take off, but the original belt, which is the sea route, and the road, which is the silk road of trade between east and west, uh, they did now exist. Truly, uh, global trade kicked off in the age of discovery. It was in this era from the end of the 15th century onwards. The European explorers connected East and West and accidentally discovered the America. Aided by the discoveries of the so-called scientific revolution in the fields of astronomy, uh, uh, mechanics, physics and shaping the, the Portuguese, Spanish and later the Dutch and the English first discovered, then uh, uh, subjugated and finally integrated new lands in their economies. The age of discovery rocked the world. The most infamous discovery is that of the America by Columbus, which all but ended pre-Columbian civilizations. But the most uh, conse consequential exploration was the uh, circumnavigation by Magellan. It opened the door to the Spice Icelands, cutting out Arab and Italian middlemen 
while trade uh, once again rem remained small compared to total G uh, GDP. It certainly altered people's lives, like potatoes, tomatoes, coffee and chocolate were introduced in Europe, and the price of spices fell uh, uh, steeply. Economists today still uh, don't uh, truly regard this era as one of the true globalization. Trade certainly started to become global and it had even been the main reason for starting the age of discovery. But the resulting global economy was still very much uh, uh, slide and lopsided. The European empires set up globally our global supply chains, but mostly with the, those uh, colonies they owned, their colonial model was chiefly one of the exploitation, including the shameful legacy of the slave trade. The empires thus created a, a, a colonial economy, but not a truly globalized one. The words war also played a, an important role in globalization because it was a situation that was bound to end in a major crisis, and it did. Like in 1914, the outbreak of the World War I brought an end to just about everything the uh, burgeoning high society of the West had gotten so used to including globalization. The revenge was complete. Millions of soldiers died in battle. Millions of civilians died as the uh, collateral damages. War replaced the trade. Destructions replaced constructions. And countries closed their borders yet again. In the years between the world wars, the financial markets which were still connected in a global web, caused a further breakdown of the global economy at, at, uh, and its links. The Great Depression in the United States led to the end of the boom in South of America and a run on the banks in many other parts of the world. Another war was followed in 19. Uh, 39 to 1945, which is the World War II. By the end of the World War II, trade is a percentage of, of the world GDP had fallen to 5%, a level not seen in more than 100 years. Let's talk about the first wave of the globalization between 19th century. This wave started a uh, to change with the first wave of globalization, which roughly occurred over the century ending in 1914. By the end of the 18th century, Great Britain had started to dominate the world both geographically through the establishment of the British Empire and technologically uh, with the innovations like the steam engine the industrial weaving machine, and more. It was the era of the first industrial revolution. The British industrial revolution made for a fantastic twin engine of global trade. On the one hand, a steam ships and trains could transport goods over thousands of miles, both within countries and across the countries. On the other hand, its uh, industri industrialization allowed Britain to make products that were in demand all over the world, like iron, textiles, and uh, manufactured goods. With its advanced industrial technologies, the BBC recently wrote a book uh, uh, like looking back to the, to the era, the Britain was able to attack a huge and rapidly expanded international market. There is a second and third wave of globalization. The story of globalization, however, was not over. 
the end of the World War II marked a new beginning for the global economy. Under the leadership of a new hegemon, the United States of America, and aided by the technologies of the second industrial revolution, like the car and the plane, global trade started to rise once again. At first, this happened in, in two separate tracks. As the iron uh, curtain divided the world into two spheres of influence, but as of 1989, when the iron curtain fell, globalization became a truly global phenomenon. In the early decades after the World War II, institutions like the European Union and other free trade vehicles championed by the United States were responsible for much of the increase in international trade. In the Soviet Union, there was a similar increase in trade. Albeit through centralized planning rather than the free market. The effect was profound. Worldwide, trade once again rose to uh, 1914 levels and 1989. Export uh, once again counted for 14% of the global GDP. It was paired with a steep rise in middle class incomes in the West. When the wall dividing East and West fell in Germany and the Soviet Union collapsed, globalization became an all conquering force. The newly created World Trade Organization, which is WTO, encouraged nations all over the world to enter into free market or free trade agreements and most of them including many newly independent ones in 2001 even china which uh, for the better part of the 20th century had been a, a, a circulated uh, agrarian economy became a member of the uh, World Trade Organization and uh, they started to manufacture for the world. In this new world, the United, set, uh, the United States set the tune and led the way, but many others benefited in their, in their uh, slipstream. It was in this world too that Alibaba a few months later opened at uh, Silk Road headquarters in, in Xi'an city. It was meant as the logistical backbone for the e-commerce going along with the new Belt and Road. But if the old Silk Road threw on the exports of the luxuries silk by camel and donkey, the new Alibaba uh, Xi'an facility would uh, be enabling a globalization of an entirely different kind. It would uh, double up as a big data college for its Alibaba cloud services. Technological progress like globalization is, uh, is something you can't run away from. It seems, but it is ever changing. Uh, so how will globalization 4.0 evolve? We will have to, to answer that question in the coming years. I think it's enough for today. Thank you for watching my video lecture. Kindly subscribe my channel so that whenever I upload my, my next video lecture, then you will get it easily. Thank you once again and best of luck.